it's George and welcome back to Call of Dragons, a dedicated free-to-play player who played this game for more than 500 days. I'm excited to share some insider tips and tricks with you. Stick around and dive in. Today we are going to speak about the seasonal uh, feature of the season of Stripe, which is myst uh, mystery skills, which is, in my opinion, very, very interesting uh, feature of this season. And today we are going to explain every single detail which is important for you guys to understand so you will be utilizing this mystery skill feature in a most perfect way so throughout the gameplay of the season of stripe we will have a chance to have uh, different skills on different heroes for example as you can see uh, if you like there is one two three four five skills which we can uh, take from another legendary or epic hero and put it on another one right which means Every single peacekeeping skill or garrison skill which we don't want to have on our legendary heroes, we can exchange it more usable on or more uh, PvP friendly skills in the game, right? Uh, so far, as you can see, I put um, in this reju rejuvenate skill, uh, which is giving HP bonus 20% and maximum legend capacity bonus 7% on my Nico instead of the engineering skill right this is the main feature of the whole game whole season uh, this is what's called mystery skill right you can simply take out the useless skills which we don't want to have on your heroes and you can put the skill which you want to have for example here i have taken out the engineering skill of the nico and i put the indie skill which is uh, pretty good in my opinion right uh, so how this even works right every single time Whenever you're gonna open the mystery monolith, you're gonna click on this book and you will see which kind of skills you can be getting uh, from this mystery skill, right? It also determines the skill levels which you have on your uh, heroes. Like, for example, you can see two levels on my Garwood. I have two levels on Tempered Bark. Uh, perfect Perfection of the form is a two level. That's why it has two levels. So uh, my advice would be to just exchange skills which are five level, right? Of course, some of the skills are pretty good. Some of the skills are kind of useless. That's the general idea behind the mystery skills. So try to understand... Uh, which skills you want to remove and which skills you got, you are going to replace with, right? Of course, like, uh, load capacity skills are useless, same as uh, gathering speed. Um, I think most perfect skills for the heroes are mainly PvP skills, which are which we will be exchanging uh, the PvP skills with the garrison skills, with the peacekeeping skills. So this is there is like a lot of. Uh, availability and a lot of perfect combination which will make some heroes even more stronger right nobody wants to have engineering skill on nico for example uh, that's why i think exchanging the engineering skill or for example peacekeeping skill on nika you will be exchanging those skills uh, which are pretty useless in pvp right i think a uh, most perfect combination of the skills are that every single skill uh, which legendary hero has uh, should be useful on pvp in open field battles that's the way to go in my opinion right and you can mix and match uh, for example some cavalry likes to have a skill damage factor maybe you're gonna add some skill damage factor on the uh, cavalries of course mages want to have a uh, hero skill damage dealt um, which is pretty important because mages are dealing mainly skill damage factor, magic skill damage factor towards the enemies. And for the marksmen, I think a normal attack damage, uh, some HP for survivability is quite good also with some counter attack damage. Uh, so here we can see like a couple of interesting skills which you can add uh, to your existing heroes. Like for example, uh, Rejuvenating Blessing, if you have level 5 is quite good. Oracle's Grace is quite good, very important uh, buffs, it, attack buff and hero skill damage taken reduction buff. Um, provocation is quite good, normal attack damage bonus 20%, hero skill damage taken 10%. Um, Watcher's Blade is quite good, rage accumulation speed, because there is a lot of heroes which are dependent on their rage skill, so it should be quite good. Uh, also, Frostbite. 
for epic hero from the epic hero Walder. 15% hero skill damage deal is quite good. And even devotion legion um, HP bonus 10% and physical attack 10%, which is quite good, right? Also, we need to mention that for almost every single new player, like different player, uh, mystery skills are quite different. That's why I'm trying to explain the whole concept of the mystery skill. Uh, and you will... doesn't really matter what kind of skill you will have. If you understand the whole concept, it will be easier for you to put the uh, preferred skills on the heroes which you need, right? I think some skills are quite bad, such as... Uh, Caravaneer, like, uh, load capacity is quite bad. Secret of the Trees is kinda useless. You generally don't want to add the Gathering Speed bonus on your heroes, uh, because we already have some heroes which are great with the Gathering. Um, uh, for example, for, like, Eliana skill, which is taking 30% less normal attack damage, can be nice, uh, for infantry, because more tanky you are as an infantry, better you will be performing uh, around the battlefield. Uh, Grey Mers Ballista, normal attack bonus, counter attack damage bonus can be good for some uh, marksmen and even some more of a damage dealer infantry hero pairs, right? So there is a lot of skills which you can mix and max, mix and match uh, throughout the heroes which you have. And I think in general, um, mastery skills are quite good addition towards the game uh, because you will have a different kind of skills on your heroes. Uh, new, like it's sometimes it feels like that whenever you are adding even one skill to your hero, like it changes the whole dynamic around the PvP and open field battles because. Well, it's pretty well known that best heroes around the open field battles are heroes which has every single skill usable on the P in the PvP, right? So in our season, in Season of Strife, we will have opportunity to make these kind of heroes and trust me, you will be feeling the benefits of adding the correct skill to your um, uh, heroes, right? Uh, so how you can get the... Uh, monolith uh, stones, testament stones. Well, it's pretty easy. Uh, Protector's quest. You have. You are going to have quests here, which you are going to do every single reset, uh, and you are getting these monolith testament stones, uh, which are important to have. Also, we need to mention that every single quest here can be upgraded, and whenever you're gonna upgrade those skills, you are getting more uh, like testament stones, right? For example, here. Uh, if I'm going to donate uh, 600k um, or I'm getting 125 uh, stones, but if I will upgrade this quest, I will get 250 um, testament stones, but I will have to donate 1.2 million ore, right? Which I'm going to do that, so I will be able to show you guys how it's done. So we donated 1.2 million ore to this quest, we upgraded this quest and we are getting more rewards than before. Um, same for here, for example, but I have already gathered my dark chest, so I, it's, it will be better for me to just claim these rewards, right? And yeah, every single reset, these quests are being resetted, and you will have more opportunities to unlock uh, more quests and even upgrade the quests, because upgrading gives you more uh, currency for you to upgrade more skills, right? For what these currencies are used for, of course, it's really important to know that this currency, which is a stone testaments, are important because whenever you are looking for some skills, every single reset, you have one free chance of uh, getting new skill here. But if you want to get more, you can see you need 400 testament stones in order for you to unlock more uh, skills, which is needed because you never know. Uh, maybe you don't like any of the skills which you have already unlocked and you want to keep searching, maybe you will get something more, right? As you can see, more free attempts available in 8 hours. 8 hours is reset time. And if you already used your free reset, you can always use your 400 testament stones and you will be able to unlock the new skill, right? We just unlock Eye of the Insight and that's how in general I think uh, monolith uh, mastery monolith system works. At first you kind of need to unlock the skills. Uh, you will see the preferable skill you want to choose. You're gonna click on activate. After you're gonna click on activate, you will choose the hero which you're gonna 
put this skill on and you will choose the skill which you are exchanging this skill right uh, so far i'm looking forward to having like mage skill because i have already used um, rejuvenate on my archer which is nico i like perfection of the form and i would be advising uh players who have perfection form on five level to add on mage heroes uh because that's uh, one of the best skills uh which you're gonna have on the mastery skill system right because um legion deals more hero skill damage and gains march speed it's a perfect combination for mages because mages are lacking some march speed and their main damage type is uh skill damage right uh, so this is how getting skills work in mastery monolith uh, skill system i think it's pretty interesting system uh and uh, like depending on your playstyle if you are archer main of course you would like to have more archer playstyle and if you are mage, you're gonna put more of a mage heroes and so on, like infantry, infantry and cavalry. Um, now I will tell you guys like what would be my suggestions um, for sure. Like for example, on Nico, I removed the engineering skill and I put rejuvenating blessing, which made my Nico and Kinara more tankier. Uh, of course, there is another way, like for example, Sindron and Freygar, uh, you will be exchanging uh, some soaring ambition because that's a uh, sieging and stronghold skill if you want to make your syndrome more of an open field fighter you are going to exchange this skill right uh, in terms of other ones for example for craig as an archer main you are going to exchange the engineering passive skill um, i would be advising you guys to put uh, skill damage factor skill on uh, craig because craig's main damage type is skill damage factor Craig is not mainly for the normal attack. Uh, in terms of like um, uh, Magrat, I would be exchanging Magrat's garrison skill if you don't want to uh, put uh, Magrat as a garrison hero, but I think uh, Magrat is pretty good as a garrison leader, right? But maybe you want to have more of, an, more of a uh, PvP uh, Magrat and Zyda um, hero pair and you are going to exchange uh, the Fungal Fever. Uh, and I would be advising you to put some normal attacks or some healing or some buffs on the uh, fun instead of this garrison skill, right? Uh, of course, there is like more choices. For example, Nika, you are going to exchange... A peacekeeping skill for uh, Bakshi, you are going to remove this peacekeeping skill. And yeah, you, I think you guys understand the whole idea behind the mastery skill um, like feature, right? For Tohar, you don't want to, if you don't want to have garrison skill, uh, you are going to exchange the garrison skill and so on, right? We have a lot of heroes uh, in Call of Dragons which has at least one skills, which skill which is kind of useless in PvP battles. And I think Mastery Skill event is for that, that uh, you will have the heroes for PvP which has every single skill usable in the battlefield, right? Uh, for example, like Goresh and Skogul, I'm not sure if you are going to exchange anything here because everything, every single skill is pretty good in my opinion. For Theodore, I, I guess you are going to exchange the Garrison skill for the Theodore and you're gonna put some tankiness, maybe more rage accumulation speed, even like 30% less normal attack damage from Eliana can be quite good, uh, which is, yeah, this skill can be quite good for Theodore because awakening skill of the Theodore is giving 25% less normal attack damage, and if you're gonna exchange this uh, skill, the stronghold skill for uh, instead of Eliana, which is gonna give you 30% more, um, like, less normal attack damage taken, you will make your Theodore way, way stronger. So, my main advice is, in terms of heroes, try to exchange peacekeeping skills, try to exchange, um, like, garrison skills on heroes which you are not using as a garrison. Uh, in my opinion, this is pretty interesting mechanic which is added to the game, and I think it's pretty fun. Um, uh, everybody, I think everybody was liking something like this because I think peacekeeping skills are kind of useless, right? Um, simply because uh, uh, during reset, uh, no, like there is not a uh, not a thing about upgrading levels of your heroes because hero levels are staying same. That's why I think peacekeeping skills are getting useless and useless time by time. And I think. This mastery monolith system will help uh, the heroes which were having peacekeeping skills and you are going to exchange these skills which you kind of like on a different hero.
right? Um, I, I, I hope you guys understand this system more after watching this video. If you do, as always, uh, press like, subscribe, share. It always gives me more and more motivation to make more videos for this amazing game. I wish everybody amazing morning, day or night. We are going to see each other really, really soon. Bye-bye and luck.